Should you build a PC now or perhaps upgrade your existing PC or buy any PC hardware in general? This is going to be the hardest time I've ever had to ask this question. Usually there's a much easier answer like yes or no, but it's very complicated now. There are many factors happening. The GPU market affects every single other component from CPUs to cases. After all, it's the main catalyst by which people really choose what type of build they're going to do, and it's usually the thing most commonly upgraded for a really nice improvement in their gaming experience. And the market is really collapsing. That's the best way to put it. Prices have come down extremely hard. Look at this example. This is a newly released 3090 Ti, an Asus Tough. Granted, not many people wanted to buy this GPU in the first place, but Openbox is already available at a massive discount at $1599. Big difference from $1999 and even $2149 that other 3090 Ti's were priced at. That shows you that people were not only not buying this GPU, it's actually been up there for a while, they're returning it when they see all of the other values absolutely tank. Now, that's an extreme version of the GPU pricing. You can look at other things like 3070s, 3070Ti's, all of them have gone down considerably in price, and thankfully, even the more entry-level GPUs for everybody that has, you know, the budget in mind, priced pretty good, is a Windows CD key. Today's video sponsor is going to be VIP-CDKDeals.com. Very simple process. You can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key, and remember to use code CC20 for a nice discount. It's normal. Most people don't want to spend over $1,000 on a GPU. They want something that's going to give them great 1080p or 1440p performance and be under $400 perhaps. Now, certainly it's possible with even the 6600 XT, the Nvidia 3050, even some 3060s getting lower or near that $400 level. So, those things in mind, there are also other things going on. If we look at CPUs, yes, AMD's Ryzen certainly is still a great platform. It's not nearly as advanced as Intel's Z690 platform with a DDR5 RAM. Of course, you can have PCIe Generation 5. All those things have really heavy diminishing return. And in general, you're going to spend a little more to get into a newer platform. But AMD's Ryzen has been really, really discounted heavily, much like the GPUs making it a potentially fairly attractive option for people that want to get a 5900X for under $400, or even a 5950X that has been going for around that five to $600 range. Now, here is where sort of the battle begins and the other side starts pushing. Yes, existing hardware is much cheaper than it's been there and at any point pretty much in the last year, maybe even the last two years. Everything is much more available. Um, people used to tell me nobody has micro centers near them, so I shouldn't bring it up. But now it's also available online like Newegg, even in other countries. Now, granted, this is going to be in America first and other countries, especially in Europe. It still takes a little bit longer for pricing to go down and availability improve. But at least in the U.S., this certainly has been true. You can walk into any store, physical store, or most online places like Newegg and Amazon, and you'll see pretty decent stock of many GPUs with prices going down seemingly day after day. So what's the other side of this? What's the other battle? Well, the biggest issue is that new hardware is slated for release. I mean, look, AMD just sort of announced their Ryzen 7000 platform with X670. Of course, they're going to have, you know, B670, X670 Extreme, a few different tiers, but Ryzen 7000 proves to be at least as good, if not better, than Intel's Z690, like the 12900K. It's going to have PCIe Generation 5, uh, DDR5. It's going to have all the good stuff that people want in terms of future-proofing their existing build. And then if you do buy a cheaper X570 now, of course, it's going to be even cheaper when the next generation comes out, probably later in the fall. You're going to be a little bit behind because you're going to be stuck on the older DDR4 as things improve. You're not going to have that future-proofing type of tech. Not to mention that the CPUs are pretty much going to end the line at X570, meaning the 5950X, as good as it is, is going to be the last CPU for that platform. You're going to have to get a whole new motherboard, X670, in order to take advantage of the new stuff. So that's certainly a valid question. Do you save what probably is a ton of money now and get something that's still going to be actually pretty good for gaming, multi-threaded workloads? It's not like it's an inferior product. Or you wait until the new stuff comes out. Of course, it may be hard to get and you're going to pay a premium to be one of the first in line to get those products. Or of course, when the new stuff comes out, the existing stuff, if you wait, it's going to be even cheaper because then, you know, retailers have to make space for the new product. So certainly an interesting dilemma. I would say if you have something now that's 
fairly recent and in terms of like a motherboard and CPU, I would just hold on until the new stuff comes out because then Intel is going to respond in kind to AMD and likely we're just going to have much better products next generation and the stuff now is going to be pretty quickly outdated unless you really, really have to upgrade. Maybe if your stuff is not working now or it's really, really inferior, you may actually be able to take advantage of some good pricing now on what still will be pretty good CPUs and motherboards that eventually you could always upgrade later. So that's certainly something to think about. Now, the other big thing here, of course, is going to be on the GPU side. Recently, we started seeing leaks for the RTX 4000, not only in possible performance figures, but also in a possible cooler design for the RTX 4090. Of course, those GPUs most likely will be certainly very, very power hungry. So that's something to keep in mind in your total upgrade ability. If you're buying a, a power supply now, make sure it's going to be able to handle what level of GPU that you want. For something like a 4090, you may actually even need maybe a thousand watt power supply, especially if you want to do a high-end CPU. And certainly you probably want to start to get above 750, 850 for even some of the other GPUs in the lineup. That traditionally was okay with like a 550 or 650, just so you're going to be a little bit more future-proof. So RTX 4000, when that comes out, that's really going to drop the price of the existing high-end GPUs even further. If you think that some of them are getting cheaper now, they're not necessarily at MSRP aside from Founders Edition. They're certainly pretty close now, the third-party AIB models. A lot of them are just a little bit above that original NVIDIA MSRP, and of course, they're widely available. If you think that's true now, just watch when the next generation comes out. Now, there were some rumors that it was going to come out around July. I think that's too early. Maybe August or September is a little bit more likely to make sure that they can actually sell the existing stock of RTX 3000 GPUs. And trust me, from seeing my local store, they have a tremendous amount in stock. We're talking about literally every model GPU that they sell. They have a decent amount of them, even some like 3090 Ti's that nobody's buying. They have 20, 25 of them. And of course, 3060's and 3070's, which were harder to find, even 3080's, they seem to have in pretty abundant stock because people simply are not buying now. So overall, what's my advice if you're thinking of building a computer or even upgrading it? Unless you get a really good deal, that's probably even below MSRP on maybe a GPU that you've been wanting for the last year or two, I would definitely wait even for the motherboard and CPU. Maybe you can get a case now or something like that. Maybe that's not going to make as big of a difference or even a power supply if you get a good one should have a pretty long-term prospect for whatever build you do. But by the end of the year, we should see some pretty significant differences in the motherboards and CPUs available from AMD and most likely from Intel. And of course, the GPU landscape is going to be completely different with potentially lower prices on the stuff that's out now that you may still want at a lower price. And of course, new generations coming out with much better performance and who knows what the pricing will be. Certainly it's probably going to be high if recent GPU releases are any indication, but with a very soft market, maybe they might lower the price at least a little bit. So for most people, I would certainly wait. The only reason I would get something now is if you really see a fantastic deal on somebody getting rid of, of a GPU that maybe you had an eye on for the last year or two and it was just way too expensive. Maybe if it's cheap enough now and eventually you can resell it and get something new, it may not really be a terrible idea. But for most people, I would hold off, watch the market, remember to subscribe and watch my channel here. I certainly will keep you guys constantly updated on whatever's coming out with the CPUs and especially the GPUs, of course, so you can make a better decision on what to get. Most importantly, when to get it and where to get it and how much to pay for it. Those are very important factors that change all the time. And you can go from local stores to online, as we've seen during the last year. So remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Let me know below if you're going to be waiting. I think most people should. And I'll see you guys on the next video.